In this presentation, we will consider one more question on recursion. So let's get started. Consider the C function given below. Here is the function available in front of you. What you need to identify is which one of the following is true. Is it A, the function returns 0 for all values of J? Is it B, the function prints the string something for all values of J? Is it C, the function returns 0 when J is equals to 50? Or is it D, the function will exhaust the runtime stack or run into an infinite loop when J is equals to 50? This question has been asked in gate 2014, set 2. I would encourage you to please pause the video for a while and try to answer this question on your own. I hope you're done. Okay, let's dive into the solution now. You can straight away eliminate this option B because it says the function prints the strings something for all values of J. Obviously for J equals to 50, this condition is satisfied because I is also 50, right? And then it will definitely print this string something on the screen. This is correct. But if suppose J is equals to 51 or maybe 52 or maybe some other value, then what will happen? then definitely this condition will not satisfy, right? And it will not print something string on the screen. Therefore, this option can straight away be eliminated. The function prints the string something for all values of j is incorrect because only for j equals to 50, it will print this string something. Otherwise, it will not print something. So, this is an incorrect option. Let's see option C. The function returns 0 when j is equals to 50. Let's take j equals to 50 and see whether this function returns 0 or not. j is equals to 50, right? And inside this function, you can see there is one variable i whose value is initialized to 50. And this is an integer variable, of course. And apart from this, the modifier is also mentioned that this variable is static. This means if you call this function once again, it will retain its value, right? This is what static means. After this, we have a variable k. And then after that, we are checking this condition, is i equals to j or not. As j is 50 and i is also 50, therefore this condition is satisfied. We will print something on the screen. And then after that, we will simply call this function f once again, right? This is recursion. And you are passing the value of i to this variable j. i contains value 50, therefore j will again contain value 50. Now the control will transfer from the previous function to this function j will contain value 50. Again, this condition satisfies. Then we will print something string on the screen. And then again, we call this function f. i will contain value 50 only. Therefore, again, this j will contain value 50. Now, you can clearly see what is happening here. You are simply calling this function again and again with the same value of j, that is 50. So, it will run into infinite loop. And it will never return 0, right? Therefore, when j equals to 50, it will go into infinite loop and hence the function will never return 0. Hence this option is also incorrect. You can also eliminate option A because it says the function returns 0 for all values of j. For j equals to 50, it will go into infinite loop. Then how it will return 0 for all values of j? For other values of j, it will definitely return 0. But for j equals to 50, it will not return 0, right? Therefore, the function return 0 for all values of j is also incorrect statement. We are left with just one option which says the function will exhaust the runtime stack or run into an infinite loop when j equals to 50. This is correct. This is what we have observed, right? When j is equals to 50, this function will go into infinite loop and we will receive the error stack overflow because of the infinite loop runtime stack will exhaust at the end right? Therefore, we can clearly say option D is the correct option. 